Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so we're gonna be working on a very um, fun project. It's a, a big project. <laughs> Over a year ago, one of the very first makeovers that I did in my house was my kitchen. And we actually did some really small but really impactful updates in the kitchen. So we changed out the handles, a new rug in the breakfast area. I kind of refinished the top of a table, did new art, hung some shelves. There was a lot that we did, but I feel like <laughs> I have evolved a lot since then and where a lot of the things in the kitchen I absolutely love there is one big 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 problem is that we do not have a pantry so the cabinet that we had for our pantry was overflowing with stuff so one of the many changes that we're gonna be doing to this breakfast nook in the back of my kitchen is adding a DIY pantry I found this bookcase and they had several it was $24.99 but it was 50% off so I got around 12 bucks and I was like this could be transformed into a pantry that I could use. We're also gonna be doing some decor updates and just kind of tying this room into the rest of my house. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm not a big fan of white walls in my own house. I like it a tinge more tan, more beige, more ashy. And I feel like this particular white that's in this rental that we have is just not the best white. It's like, it's not a good white. <laughs> And here's kind of an inspiration of what I'm going for in this kitchen. I wanna really warm it up and bring in a little bit of a contemporary vintage look to tie the living room and my entryway in throughout this kitchen. Let's get started with the pantry, get that going, and then we'll do some updates and redesign this little breakfast nook in my kitchen. I liked it because it's, it's solid wood. This would be a lot more expensive for me to make if I had to buy all of the wood. So it was definitely a deal. Part of it, I want it to have doors and then part of it I want it to be exposed clean it up and paint it here is tricorn black this is what I use in the living room on the window so it'll definitely tie in but in the living room it's a satin finish so we'll do flat for the pantry then I went to the flea market and I found this vintage light on the vintage I'm actually not sure how old this is very textured wallpaper to do this on the back of each of the shelves and then just do the doors solid. And I found these solid brass knobs. They are heavy, you guys. I know or you can't tell on camera, but these are so heavy, beautiful on the doors. So with the wallpaper and this, it would have like this vintage kind of vibe and it being all black. So the first thing I'm gonna do is prime this whole cabinet, except for right behind where I'm gonna wallpaper because it's not necessary. So I'm using the Spin Zenzer Primer. This one is the water-based primer and it'll just help, and not that I need to cover this up, obviously we're painting this black it's just used to create a smoother finish at the end I'm going in with the corners with an angled brush and then using a foam roller on the larger surfaces so the only wallpaper adhesive that they had at Lowe's was like huge containers and I just did a project in my last video where I used Mod Podge and since this is such a small area and I'm not doing a full wall or anything like that you just use Mod Podge so I'm gonna cut it 12 and a half and then we'll just slice the bottom with an exacto knife laying the cabinet it down was so much easier and definitely putting the Mod Podge directly on the back of the wallpaper then putting it down so that it's already there. If mine was a more smooth wallpaper I would have to make sure that I'm applying more of an even coat of Mod Podge I believe so that I could avoid any bubbles or ripples in the paper. Mine is so textured that you can't even see it so I'm kind of over applying. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ah, uh, that took a really long time. So basically I had to do the center and it would have been a lot easier if I could actually remove these shelves, but it's all built in. And then I had to come back and match up the side pieces to the right pattern. Next step is to paint it. <laughs> Got the whole cabinet painted. So now for our doors. Super lucky. I 
had some leftover wood from the closet makeover when we did the shelves, the DIY shelves. And it's really expensive wood too. It's three quarters of an inch thick. I didn't have to buy more wood. I also picked up these metal hinges. I'm just gonna pick a whole number so it's really easy to cut. So since they attach like this, I actually can't make this, obviously the door go all the way to the edge. I need it to the inside edge. I like to elevate anything that I'm gonna have to paint the edges on, like cabinet doors, stuff like that. Um, so I just keep using these um, plastic cups over and over and over again for all of these projects. And it really helps to make an even finish along the sides of your cabinet. Oh, and Kinsley loves to play with them. Go see your, go see your dad, go. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna prime them on both sides and the edges and then paint them with two coats of the tricorn black paint in flat so that it all matches. So this is the area that is really simply decorative, pantry of some sort where we could store all of this stuff. It would just make so much more sense for our lives. One of the things that is being removed from this kitchen are these beautiful watercolor art prints that I made. I am going to be selling them on my Etsy. So along with many other things that I'm gonna be putting on Etsy, if you go to my Etsy shop and it's no longer there, it means it's sold and it's no longer available. Available. So pretty. I love them so much, but I've recreated them since so if I ever want them in another space I can make them again for picking the color of the paint in here that I wanted to use I loved this color that I mixed and I thought that it would be so pretty in here because it's ashy light but warm beige So this is the nomadic desert color, which is this first color here So it's on the darker side and I mixed it with white gallery Which I use on the baseboards and the crown molding and stuff that's throughout my house to get shades of that color I really liked this third one. I picked up a gallon of this in a flat finish I want to continue this color around to the window side around this way and I'm gonna cut a line right above the cabinets I'm gonna work on some other projects while I have some daylight and we're gonna paint that tonight so we are hi baby a very special decor element that I wanted to put into this breakfast nook was a gallery wall I have been collecting vintage frames so when I come across them at a great price I feel like the most that I maybe have spent on any any of them was the larger size and it was around $30 I got this one for four bucks, four fifty. Look, from a thrift store in Texas. My mom is an amazing painter. I called her. I was like, "Mom, could I commission you to make me some landscape art for my gallery wall? Because I wanted it super special." I'm gonna roll the clips of me opening them and showing you each and every one of them. Special one that had me in tears. <gasps> They're so pretty. Yeah, you did that with acrylic. I love just simple abstract landscapes. Like that's what we were going for. Like I like the mountains on this one. Do you? I do. I like that they're subtle. <gasps> the sheep. <gasps> oh my god, this is my favorite. Mom. We have a lot of sheep back home and I I was like, "Oh, I it would be really cute if you painted sheep." And she was like, "Sheep." <laughs> sheep are hard. <laughs> Gosh, it almost looks like an icy, like, city. Merry Christmas early surprise. <laughs> Stop, Kinsley. Love you, Mom. Oil. You did it in oil? <gasps> it's Kinsley! Oh! <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I mean, of course I know she's talented and of course I love her, but I cannot believe 
that she painted Kinsley. This is the expression that Kinsley gives you. She turns, she turns to the side like that. The shape of her head, the way that she looks at you and her ears go back just a little bit, just like this. Like she could not have done a better job to capture sheep in the landscape. And I am going to upload digital downloads of these particular art, not Kinsley, cause that one's, that one's my baby. That one's gonna stay with me. But the rest of them, I will be putting on my Etsy as digital downloads so that you guys can print them out at home. But if you wanted them a little higher quality, you can also have them printed at maybe walmart.com or staples or somewhere else online that prints on canvas still give you the same look if you wanted to add an accent picture somewhere or just make a gallery wall like this one so and they'll be at a great price obviously because they're di digital downloads and you guys will have to pay to print them okay morning update we did not finish painting because i just kept thinking that this paint was just not right I think what my problem is, is I didn't like it with the floor. Then it was even more evident when I got, oh, this is obviously one coat, so this is a really unfinished job, but I didn't like this color with the granite. And I just kept looking at it and just feeling like it just, it wasn't right. So last night around 8.30, I ran back to Lowe's and got two more samples. And so this is called like natural tan, I believe. I'll put it on the screen. And then this, I took this vase in so that they could kind of color match it. This was the color match that they made to this one. But in person, it's just too dark for the space. This was a lighter version of that color. I wanna go this route. I feel like I strayed from my inspiration a little bit too much. We are repainting this room in three, two, one. That. It was definitely the right decision to go with this color, change course. I don't know if on camera you could actually see that the other color had a little tinge of pink. This is kind of like a light white khaki. It took me about two hours to do it all by myself. So now we gotta put the gallery wall together. I laid out the art last night and decided which frame was gonna go with which art piece so that it was kind of easier on myself. or seen anyone else do it, use some paper, cut out a template of each of the sizes of the frames that you have, and then tape them up onto the wall, and then arrange them and move them around however you want. And then it's really easy to add the nails and hang the gallery wall up. You wanna remember which one you trace, write on the piece of paper exactly which one they are, so I remember. 88 and a quarter, so 44 and an eighth. One on each side, and then two up and two down. So here, I think, is the final placement. Now you're able to mark exactly where the hanger is on your picture so that you can measure and mark, and it's exactly in the center. So I'm gonna use these indoor multi-surface screws instead of picture hanging screws, just because, you know, California is a little sturdier. Then you can take off the paper. <laughs> I love it already. <laughs> blown away by this. I feel like I'm in a luxury art gallery. I hope that all of you guys feel when you do a project or you create a new like room makeover or something and you just look at it and it just, it just like gives you so much joy because this is what this wall gives me. So the doors 100% need another coat on the back side for sure. And I wanna make sure it dries really, really well and put a water-based polyurethane sealer on it. Since we're gonna be using this a lot, I wanted the surface to be really durable, especially since I used a flat paint. But I do wanna go ahead and get the doors on the cabinet so that that can just dry, it's out of the way. Day. And another big day with just kind of like styling. I mean, I'm very excited because our new table is about to be delivered. 
like within the next like five minutes. I found a local furniture maker. I really wanted to lighten my load a little bit and I picked the size, the shape, the thickness of the wood. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty and the color just warms up this space so much. And they did this so fast for me. I'm so appreciative. If you guys are in the LA area looking for some furniture, reach out to them. Oh, it's pretty. So next up, we're going to be putting all of the dry goods into these containers. And I really want them to look just like this. I did this one last night. So this was for flower jars up from Ikea. I also ordered this label maker that makes these labels. I put a couple spaces at the front and the end of the word so that it had, you know, some breathing room. Got all of my labels here. There are labels that I can cut to put on the back so that I can have the date. Definitely put these on the top because this is more a simple kind of styled look. Okay. And then here will be the small ones. Since there's more of them, it'll look better to your eye. Down here is where we can fold all of the linens, like all of my pretty napkins and stuff. That also, one more thing that I want to do to this pantry is you see how this part goes up? I don't think that that looks finished. I feel like it's odd. So. I'm gonna put a piece of wood here and paint that black as well and possibly even put another piece on top um, so that it just kind of creates a natural topper to this so that it doesn't look, right now it kind of looks unfinished. Okay, it is officially the final day in making over my breakfast nook. I did keep the original chairs that I had in here. They are great. They're actually from Wayfair, and I wanted to get two more to match. I don't have them anymore. I'm gonna check the link again just to see. There's a very similar chair at Target, so I'll link those. Obviously, there's just two of us, and we have the bench in the entryway that I could always use as additional seating, something like that. So to not overcrowd this area, I actually don't mind that I just have two chairs. Dude, let's talk about lighting. Two years ago, I found this rattan shade at the flea market. Well, I know that it is ikea it's around like 60 or 70 dollars or something in that range i got it at the flea market for 12 bucks the color is a little too like boho for me so here is one of the inspiration pictures and when it comes to the light you can see that it's like this warmer color it's not black but it's like a dark brown i was testing out what stains would look like if i stained it this stain right here is english chestnut which is the same as the table um, but it would just need a couple coats this color is jacobean Jacobean. I'm getting better at pronouncing that word. So this one you can see is a lot darker, a lot more like our inspiration picture. I also want to paint this red. It's the perfect shape, but it's a horrible color. I like to reuse when I can. So I have this burlap color which is a very nice kind of like tonal color. And since it's going in the pantry and the pantry's black, it'll be kind of a nice contrast. So I'm gonna spray paint this guy in matte burlap. I also have all of these amazing pieces that I've collected from like thrift stores and flea markets. I got this one in the Texas for like $2. And these, all of these are all recent finds that I picked up from the flea market. So if you guys haven't seen my latest flea market vlog over on the vlog channel, I did an extended version. So I took you guys all throughout the flea market with me, everything that I saw, but you guys saw the highlight reel, obviously, and then did a huge haul at the end of that video. So if you guys wanna check that out, it'll be on my vlog channel, I'll link it. So I thought it could go here. 
since there's a contrast from the black in the pantry to a lighter colored vase to add dimension. These are vintage Clorox and Lysol bottles. I felt like they were just kind of decorative, pretty amber vases. I was specifically looking for amber vases when I went the last time, but I thought kind of all of these pieces could be collaged together. I like to style it pretty and then we live with it to see how it, we what we need from it and then we can always rearrange. This is so pretty. We were kind of going with a little bit of a mixed metal here. Kind of to tie in the silver that's in the jars. Red pears that I picked up from the grocery store. I thought it would be a pretty, it was a pretty fruit bowl. That's what I envisioned for it. So I already had this little plant and planner and I was kind of trying to make it work before finding another place in my house for it and it just doesn't really work in here. I was just at Lowe's and I found this guy and I really like wispy, thin, kind of like greenery of plants. Uh, get out of here. <laughs> One of the hardiest and most popular indoor plants. This one's called a Aurelia, Aurelia. But let's try in here. Well, let's try the other corner, just for fun. No, see, I think it needs to be on the other side. <laughs> Although I really like that it hides that plug. That is the last part of this new makeover and I love how it came out. So let's look back at what it looked like before and then the reveal. enjoyed revamping my breakfast nook and a DIY pantry with me. This space now ties so well into the rest of my house. If you did like this video, hit that like button. It helps the channel so, so much. And if you haven't checked out the vlog where I extreme organized my kitchen cabinets, I'll leave that linked for you too. And if you're not already subscribed, I post new room makeovers like this, DIY projects. We just did a thrift flip last week. So if you guys haven't checked out any of my latest videos and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload every Sunday. Kinsley helps with all the projects too. And we will see you guys next Sunday. Bye guys. You guys say bye. If you get to a point where you're painting a wall or you're working on a project and it doesn't feel right and your gut is telling you to change it, just do it. Don't, don't worry about what anyone else tells you. Don't worry if your husband or your boyfriend tells you, oh, it looks really good. It's wrong. Just go with it. The next one will look really good too. <laughs>